put my patient's information on my sheet. So I have my diet screen sheet. Put my patient's name on there. Shine Curtis. Age, 46 and fabulous. <laughs> Female, physician's name, Dr. Kite. Collection date. Today is 2-11-15. Test date is also 2-11-15. Now, you could get a patient that comes in at the very end of the day. They come in at 5 minutes to 5. They take that urine sample, then they're going to refrigerate that urine sample, then the next day somebody will come in and they'll actually do. Okay? In urgent care, that's not going to happen. If somebody comes in and they're complaining, oh, my back is hurting, it burns when I urinate, they're getting dipped right then and there. Chances are they have a UTI or they have a kidney infection. Okay? Tester's initials, P, Q. Now, I have my urine sample. It's asking me for its physical characteristics. So, this sample is a yellow sample. When it says colorless, that's going to be that sample that when it's in the cup, it looks clear. It almost looks like you're looking through water. Okay? The second thing that it asked me is an appearance. So, when I go to look at this, this is a clear sample because I can see straight through the cup. I can actually look through this cup and see Becky. Okay? <laughs> It looks a little <laughs> if it was hazy, then you would see a slight haze to it. If it was cloudy, you would actually see the clouds actually in it. And again, a turbid sample, you would actually see, it would be the equivalent of like when you go to the ocean or go to the beach and you scoop up sand and shake it and then you can still see rocks and things that are in actually sediment and stuff that are in the sand. That's what this urine sample would look like. It would actually have sediment and everything in it that could actually still be floating free or actually where it floated and then set up to the bottom, just like it would do if you separated it. It would, all the sediment sits at the bottom. Okay. So, I'm going to ask my patient, are you diabetic? Yes, the patient is diabetic. So, I will put in my comments. Diabetes. Are you on antibiotics? Yes. Well, I just finished. So we will put finish amoxicillin, 500 milligrams, Monday. So that was 2 9 15. Okay. Any recent UTIs? No. I'm a woman under the age of 50, so then the question would be asked, LMP, last menstrual period. For me, that would be 7 of 2,000. Okay? <laughs> Alrighty. So, what I like about these cups is that we don't have to use a transfer straw, where you actually have to use an actual transfer straw, stick it in the urine cup, and then put your urine tube on. The transfer straw for this is actually inside this cup, up under this label, okay? So, and it tells the patient not to remove the label because, of course, there's a needle on the other side, okay? So I like to loosen this up a little bit. Most men can actually push the tube hard enough to puncture through without removing this yellow piece, okay? But what I like to do first is actually get my urine strip out. So, what I want to do is I want to take my cup, I'm going to look at it, I'm going to look and put my expiration date so that the reader knows that the tubes and the test strips in here are still good. I want to open my urine first, get my strip out. Again, you want to try and get it out as quick as possible because it's light sensitive. You're going to go ahead, dip your urine strip all the way in. I tap it, get off any excess, and then I lie it down. Going to put my top back on, and then I'm going to pull this back, and then I'm going to push my urine tube on, 
it's going to fill automatically by itself. Okay? And it'll stop on its own. It's evacuated just like our blood tubes are. Take this off. We still need to invert this. What's the additive in this tube? Boric acid. Boric acid. So we still need to invert it. And then we can actually take the little yellow piece and put it back on. Now, we say everything is red at a minute. So I'm looking at my time so that I can start to record my values. Everything red at a minute except leukocytes. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to take my container and lay it so that I can actually read the values. Okay? So, urobulin is normal. You want to actually record the color that it's closest to in terms of shade. Glucose is normal. Ketones, normal. Bilirubin, negative. Protein, negative. Nitrites, negative. Leukocytes, you skip over that one because you have to come back. Blood, negative. pH is about a 6. So I'm a little acidic. Specific gravity is 1.010, which is not too, too bad. Okay. I have about 10 seconds left before I need to go back and look at my leukocytes. I'm going to go back and look at leukocytes. Leukocytes are also negative. Okay. So when you're actually looking at your strip, what you're going to be doing is looking at the strip and then looking at the container. And the same way they appear on the container, it's the same way that you're going to look down the strip. So your robulin is going to be at the top, and then you're just going to read down. Okay? Try very carefully not to let this touch this, because most people grab these without gloves on. Okay? So you want to make sure that your urine strip doesn't actually touch the urine container with the strips in it. Then once you do that, this is going to go in the trash. The rest of this urine sample is going to go to the lab, just so that they have it. You're going to label your tube like you normally would with your patient's information. Can the strips go in the regular trash or should the those go in the bio? The strips should go in bio. Okay. So, this would accompany this. You'll have a label for this, and you'll also have a label for the urine sample. So, these will both match. You'll just put them inside of a lab bag, like this urine sample is, and then it would go to the lab. And then what will happen is, based upon what they see here, if it figures out that it needs to warrant more tests, then that's when it will go up under the microscope, and they'll start to look for some additional things. Any questions? Yes. Does the label go on the cup um, vertically also? If, does it have a barcode or can we put it? Actually, the label for this is probably going to wrap this okay. way. It's not going to be one of the verticals unless it's a really, really short vertical. Okay, so just wrap. Okay. What's the, what would the difference be if the uh, lab actually did the two, taking the two or us doing it at the time of collection? Well, because this... They're generally not going to the lab. So if they come into a Sonora Quest, they're coming into a freestanding lab. There's nothing there to, for us to actually do a test up under the microscope and look but for microscopes. if you're sending them both to, together. This is so that they have an extra. <laughs> oh. Just in case this, or they look at this, and they're not quite sure. Mm. This has boric acid in it, has an additive and a preservative in it. This does not. So if they're not quite sure, they can actually test this and then go, mm, I'm not quite sure. Let me actually test the actual specimen itself without the preservative or the additive in it. So does that need to be refrigerated then? 
It would if it was going to the lab the next day. But usually your couriers come, couriers are set to come every three to four hours. So you could actually have it ready for the courier. You would actually package it up and have really it ready for a courier. Be fine. Yeah. Is the boric acid the reason it looks less yellow in the tube, or is it just the size, shape, no. just the amount? Just the amount. It's the it's amount. The okay. Any other questions? Awesome.